We're putting the band back together. Launch mode where uh -huh. uh, you two you two legged so you put one foot all the way down on the brake, the other foot all the way on the accelerator, and then launch. That is incredible power. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Alright, we're gonna start the show. So what's it like working with the founders? Are they cool guys? Oh they're great. They're <laughs> yeah. just wholesome guys. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> they're really awesome. Um, they they work a lot with marketing, you know, we work hand in hand and I film videos of them and everything. Um, they're they're very unique and they each have their own, you know, things that they are good at. You know, uh, Steve's more of the engineer type. Chris is more of the like go-getter, energetic <laughs> type. So they really divvy up the work well. I think, you know, that's awesome. themselves. So what attracted us most to Aptera at the beginning was the team. Yeah, the idea that you would set aside a company several several years ago then find the passion to come back to it mm -hmm. and start it up again and bring it this far is incredible. I think, yeah, I think so too. And it's exciting to hear some of the people who came from Aptera, you know, the old Aptera who are, are back now and like kind of like reunited the team. And it's really, oh, that really, is really wholesome cool. and cute. Like a lot of these people <laughs> who, you know, old Aptera was the best thing they've ever worked on in their lives have come back and like, I mean, this is even better than that, you know, all ever was. So it. they're all on board and <laughs> excited to bring it into production. So. Incredible that you're bringing the body over from Europe. Yes. <laughs> That's So it's kind of like you're getting a sort of a European car in a sort of it, way. You know, it, it almost is an Italian built sports car in a lot of ways. And a lot of our supply chain is coming from, uh, from Europe and from Italy. So um, it's going to be great. Basically, a lot of the sub components are going to be assembled together in Italy, like our hub motors, since it's just cheaper to you know, ship the hub motors right to um, Modena, Italy. And, and uh, we're going to get a vehicle here that we just complete final assembly at. At this facility so and i think you're gonna find too that it's feels very familiar like a normal four-wheeled vehicle um i think there's a lot of misconceptions around a three-wheeler uh but just with so much forward weight you really even if you hit like something in the back wheel you don't really feel it so <laughs> it's very stable can't really flip over we've tried oh, really? like we can we pass the moose test with flying colors because what's the moose test uh the moose test is a lane change test okay so basically what that is, is um, you think of it like in Maine, I'm from Maine, so like if a moose comes into the road and you have to like pivot lanes really fast. Um, most modern SUVs actually don't pass that test nowadays because um, they have so much weight and they're so tall and they're not aerodynamic. Um, but we have like a really wide stance on the road and because of that wide stance, um, it's impossible to tip this thing over. And it has like the really low center of gravity with the battery pack under the passenger compartment too so. so the battery pack goes under the car yeah That's yeah the battery cool. packs underneath and we have a aluminum belly pan to assist in cooling the battery pack as well so the air while driving kind of assists in cooling the battery that was great to hear about that moose test. So that's one of the like very few concerns I've heard is what if it flips? How do you, <laughs> yeah, how do you get you out? You really can't flip it. <laughs> so that's and, it's, and it's gonna have uh, likely have the you know, the highest roof crush strength of any passenger vehicle wow. when it gets released. Uh, it's really a formula safety cell in a lot of ways. Um, just, you know, a bunch of carbon fiber to really keep the passengers safe. And I don't know if you saw recently, we showed uh, some of our door design, but our door also has reinforced metallic components in there too. So mm. it's not just carbon fiber, it's paired with um, different brackets that were needed to heighten safety even further than just carbon fiber. I think your focus on safety has been fantastic. It's yeah. been one of the key things, but at the same time, you've delivered just a super awesome looking and fun car. Oh yeah, I mean, for the price that we're selling is at, even if it was like double the price, it's you know ridiculously fast, goes a ridiculously long distance, and uh, yeah, I really want one. I can't wait to get mine, <laughs> you know? Uh, I currently have a Model S, but this is, you know, goes way further than the Model S for less money. <laughs> How would you compare your Model S to this when you drive it? Man, I think I prefer the suspension in Aptera. Um, okay. It's, it's a little more smooth than my Model S. Mm -hmm. um, 
And yeah, I used to have a Civic for the longest time, and I'd, I'd say it's you know very comparable to to my Civic. Um, but yeah, just the instant torque and everything is incredible in this. So if you're used to a Tesla in that way, you know, you're used to like the pinning up against your seat feeling, like mm -hmm. you get that with that Terra too. We have several viewers who are considering, um, not considering, they are trading in their uh, Priuses for yeah. an Aptera, and I'm going to be doing the same oh, thing. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect because you're just going to become full EV and you're going to get up to 40 miles a day from the sun just sitting there. So, so we're from eastern Idaho. Are we going to get not, 40 not, miles per not, day? Not the sunniest place. Not the sunniest place <laughs> in the world. So if you were even in like the cloudiest place, you could get you know 20 25 miles a day okay. so if you guys get some like sun covered you're probably gonna get 30 ish yeah. per day which is still pretty That's substantial perfect for me i mean yeah that if you you know equate that every single day the amount of solar energy you get is just ridiculous uh we have a solar calculator on our website mm -hmm. i encourage you guys to check out and and see what you get but oh, awesome. a lot of okay. people you know are going to save five grand a year just on you know fuel costs getting one of these so it becomes a no-brainer. Awesome. Uh, it really pays for itself in a short amount of time. Do I don't these... think enough people realize that. <laughs> <laughs> Do these qualify for any kind of federal grants or uh, So not right tax now. Um, currently, the way the law stands is you have to have four wheels, but we have mm. a lobbying team. We're one of the only EV startups uh, to have a lobbying team working on changing these laws to better um, you know, accept our vehicle. So I think that would, will change in the future, especially once you start seeing these out on the road. What's um, the big advantage of having the three wheels? So you have less rolling resistance, uh, which is just another way to gain efficiency. Um, basically four wheels, you know, one more wheel of, of rolling resistance to mm. your, you know, overall efficiency equation. So it just so happens that this shape as well, um, which is mathematically the, you know, least aerodynamic drag shape uh, that can fit two people side by side in it. Um, just had this point where like it wouldn't look, it looked weird to have you know four wheels. It wouldn't really work. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's great for us, um, for a new automotive company to have, you know, start with a vehicle with three wheels um, because there's a lot less legal hurdles uh, to selling these to the oh, public. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though we're choosing to do all our own um, safety validation and publishing that with everybody, um, there's a lot more legislative you know headache if you have four wheels Red and it's a, it's a car so this is a motorcycle so it's a lot easier for us to get these to market quickly will there people need to have a motorcycle license in order to drive it no so in vast majority of states you don't need a license or a helmet um, because it's three wheels usually most states you don't need the the license and then because it's covered you don't need a helmet so california is one of those i'm sure idaho is too so it's uh yeah, it's for all intents and purposes, it's a car. <laughs> it's classified as a you know motorcycle, so you can save on insurance and registration and things like that. Um, so there's just kind of benefits all around. I also love what you're doing with the QR codes to be able to replace parts Definitely. yourself. I think that's just an amazing initiative. Yeah. I think so many people appreciate that. And with the right to right to repair laws and people those big fights going on, it's so cool. I know, I agree. It doesn't seem like it should be such a contentious topic <laughs> right uh, it seems like it's only the fair thing to do you know so I like working at Aptera because it's very fair and uh, yeah I mean I'll definitely be repairing mine if I come into any issues myself why not so well congratulations on your 21 million dollar award yes oh, man. That's, <laughs> that that's gets us a step forward that's to a filling this huge forward. place up right yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, it's a matching grant, so that's why you know we are running the accelerator program because every dollar we raise there, you know, helps us match this grant. Um, and by doing that, it just you know your money goes way further when you invest in Aptera. We can kind of buy two times the amount of stuff oh, with the same awesome. money, so because we'll get reimbursed from the state. So people don't realize it's a huge undertaking to get you know awarded a state grant. Um, and that means that the state's vetted everything. You know, they've vetted our plan, they mm -hmm. you know, agree with it, they have you know, so many people making sure that money goes in the right place. So it's a huge you know, vote of confidence from the state. Absolutely, and I mean, California, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they're, uh, they're also very thorough yes. <laughs> on what they support. So Definitely, <laughs> yeah, I think sign. probably every state's super thorough nowadays, but uh, I mean, it's great, yeah. It really helps us raise additional capital too, having you know, that, um, that grant. And congratulations on your first fleet order. Yes. I didn't, even, I didn't <laughs> even realize about? that was a type of order you could have. I know, <laughs> cool, huh? an entire fleet. Um, I mean, this is a perfect fleet vehicle, you know? 
Uh, the cost of ownership of these is way, way less than any other fleet vehicle you could get. I mean, you think about food delivery in this thing, you have a, a huge trunk to put you know, delivery stuff. Um, even just if you're delivering Amazon packages, it'd be great for that. So, and with uh, the range, 400 miles. Yeah, absolutely, 400 absolutely miles. Absolutely enough the day. And I think the biggest cost for fleet is, you know, the, the cost to switch to electric is, oh my gosh, I have to get 220 volt, you know, chargers. I have to get you know, hundreds of them, let's say. But if you have Aptera, they can all be powered off of 110 volt outlets and mm -hmm. and the sun, you know. So you really eliminate a lot of the overhead of switching to electric. So. I was telling John about that last night. It's a huge advantage yeah. that you don't have to rewire your garage or get 220 out yeah. to your car somehow, that any outlet will do the, do the trick. My brother's got a Tesla and he tells me all the time he forgets to plug it in and what a tough thing that is for him. Yeah, yeah totally, I know. So, so you can easily find a plug anywhere, even at grandma's house. Yeah, just run the <laughs> extension cord out the window. I, yeah, so if, you know, you'd get 150, over, uh, 150 miles overnight. Um, Oh, that's just far greater than a Tesla gets overnight. I mean, yeah, and I get like 30 if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's efficiency really just changes everything. It makes a lot of things make more sense and uh, just eliminates costs everywhere. And so. the body shape was put in a wind tunnel and studied scientifically to determine this is it. This is as good as it gets. So there's a lot of, yeah, we originally, the original shape was um, studied by NASA. They sent it to NASA Langley. Oh, really? And NASA analyzed it and said, hey guys, this is the most aerodynamic shape you've ever seen. <laughs> so it's even so, got NASA's stamp of approval. Yeah, huh? so it got NASA's stamp of approval. Um, <laughs> and to, when does crash validate. testing occur? Yeah, so crash testing will occur once we have uh, production intent vehicles. So that's the fun thing with crash testing is you can't just crash test pre-production things. It has to be representative of what you're selling to customers. So. Okay. Uh, you know, once we get our body panels off of the line at CPC and we start to build representative vehicles, um, those are the ones that we're going to crash test. So that's all going to occur before customer deliveries. Uh, but you know, in the next year, you're going to start seeing all these things. Awesome. So what's uh, what's kind of next on the agenda for Aptair? Like, what's the next big hurdle? You know, hurdle is still fundraising, um, mm -hmm. but we're doing really well with the accelerator program. It just surpassed 10 million, so we're really excited about that. Um, it's letting us kick off some of these orders that we have to fulfill for parts and things like that. So we're going to be announcing more in the next few weeks about, you know, what the money is letting us uh, be able to, you know, accelerate and everything, which is amazing. Um, but just more continuing uh, to get into production. So more production tooling, validation. It's a lot of validation to do on the final design. Um, so that's going to be really fun. A lot of, you know, real world testing that people mm -hmm. always ask us about um, will happen when we have that production representative vehicle. It's so different actually seeing it in person. Do you think it's bigger or smaller than you thought? Bigger. I think it's, <laughs> it looks roomier on yes. the inside. That's Substantive. for sure. I think that's mm -hmm. most interesting. A lot of people keep asking us, how safe is it going to be? And we keep saying, well, I'm sure they have done everything for safety, but when you see it, you feel as if it's much more sturdy. Yeah full vehicle and the doors are just simply awesome. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what a lot of people feel like when they first see it too, you know. It, uh... I also love the running lights around the front. I never noticed those before. Oh yeah, the, uh, these or these? these are, yeah, <laughs> these are cool. Yeah, yeah, they, so there's also like a secondary turn signal. So when you, um, they'll, they're always on, but they also flash when you have the blinkers on. So they're, they give good visibility, you know, to like the widest part of the vehicle, which is great. Can we peek at the tires and the motors? And stuff Absolutely. The yeah, so those are the Alafe hub motors. The, um, hard to see, but it's that yellow ring in there. The yellow green ring. The is the is the motor is the motor yeah and we i think we have a motor laying around i can show you as well that would be um, awesome it's such a novel idea <laughs> it's so cool yeah so uh we have beta over there as well which has more production and uh, suspension compared to this vehicle but so the mirrors on the side of the car are actually cameras yeah so they're uh in production they're cameras and mirror hybrid um, but the mirror is just to meet the legal requirements so the, le the mirrors are pretty tiny like they're not really going to be used uh really the driver will have great visibility with the left and right and that um, be the cameras right mirror right there that can the, 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 the mm -hmm. tv yep yeah and in production oh, those are both centered over the yoke so if you've oh, seen okay. our gamma vehicle it has like a yoke steering wheel mm -hmm. um so that you have great direct visibility to the two screens in front of it the back is a mess. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's far, far bigger than I imagined. Yeah, and it's bigger in production than in this prototype too. Um, I'm always worried if my two border collars could fit back there, and there is plenty of. <laughs>
Yeah, it's it's cool. And in production too, we have a half square foot um, cargo bunk. It's called, which you can it's kind of like enclosed storage in this portion, so you can you know put charging cables or anything you want you know fully hidden in, in that compartment. That's awesome. I also saw that this is some kind of device to get in and out of the vehicle. Yes, yeah. So in production, if you you do a knock knock, uh, the door pops open, then you can assist in opening it. So it's it's really nice. Um, that happens when you have your car or your vehicle paired to your phone app. Oh, so it senses you walking close to it with your phone. Right, it senses you're here, and then this like is the verification that you want to go in, and you're not just walking by. Um, or if you have a key card, you can tap the key card as well. So it depends. Yeah, that's not in production, but oh, okay. originally these were going to like show charging indication and stuff. Um, but the logo does stay. The logo's pretty neat. The logo's beautiful. Who designed the logo? That's a great question. The logo is like... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. The logo's from before, um, like old Aptera, so I don't even know. The logo's been the same for a very, very long time. That's a good visual display in the car, too. That's awesome. One of our viewers <laughs> told us that we got the uh, whole story wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually very cool. Yeah, these it's pretty funny cuz, you know, concept vehicles have a lot of this where they they run off of, you know, Linux and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can just see it all boot up. Oh, that's so cool. So Chris and Steve originally started this company in 2006 and then joined forces with another company that they eventually got pushed out of or something like that. So basically, yeah, in, in Aptera's been around for a while. A while. Um, so the initial version of Aptera um, liquidated, I think I'd like to say 2010-ish. Um, and what happened was the original founders got pushed out. So they brought in, you know, Detroit, general Detroit automotive people, and they, uh, they basically didn't like the idea as much. They wanted to pivot towards like a four-wheel vehicle, not something as unique as Aptera. And yeah, the whole company kind of fell apart from there. So the original founders really have had the, you know, core vision for all this time. and. Uh, it's exciting, in 2019 they got the IP back and uh, decided it's time to start over and like do it right. That's really impressive so, that they had the... I know, they wanted to do the this cojones ever since. To get back into it, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, and I mean a lot's changed, you know, that vehicle could only go like 100 miles. Um, I mean, it was still very innovative for its time. It had a touchscreen, like big center, you know, center display touchscreen back in like wow. 2008. Um, had which a game. Is, <laughs> crazy uh, but now you know we have solar technology has improved vastly and also the supply chain is vastly improved so we have a lot of parts we can you know easily source now and uh, now solar makes a real difference and you know instead of 100 miles this can go 400 miles so <laughs> a lot of improvements that's, of. that's crazy I think a lot of people like to see it actually coming together totally and when you see this space you realize you can build something in here. Absolutely, and if you see the lines on the ground, like these are where the lines are actually gonna be. So the, the green line here is the, uh, both of our battery lines, and then the blue line is where our automated guided vehicles are gonna bring Aptera from station to station. Oh, wow. So it's all ready to go. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be cool. So um, designing a car must be hard. Yeah. Designing how to build a car in mass must be incredibly hard. That's the hard part that people don't realize it takes so long. <laughs> did you have a sales team out there selling Aptera's for the fleet programs already, or did they come to you? So this particular fleet deal came mm -hmm. to us from an ambassador, which is great. Oh, um, great. They awesome. just you know, love the company, and, and they have, they're starting a company, and they wanted to have a fleet of Aptera, which is great. Um, but yeah, we have a, you know, a fleet person, and we have a fleet website and okay. everything. So you know, if fleets are interested, we're definitely looking for that type of stuff as well, you know, anything that helps us speed up into production, so. Um, here's, uh, here's Sol, the white one, which is very pretty. Yeah. Oh, she's really pretty. I know. <laughs> wow, that's really, really oh, I like the white. Yeah, the white it's, it's very striking, I mm -hmm. think. It's really nice. I think you're going to be so successful with these. I can see people getting out of these at movie in Hollywood. Yeah. It's just it's, a great car. It's going to start to happen. <laughs> So if you want, um, we can move a few of them outside and we can, we can film stuff out there. It's probably better lighting anyway. Um, we can go for a, for a ride in Alpha and Beta as well. So this is Beta. Um, you can really see the hub motors on this prototype. Oh, wow. so, there's no wheel pants on it. So it's just a normal tire that bolts on to the hub motor. That is so cool. Yeah, and this, this is, you know, production intent suspension, so you, it's a lot better than that Alphas. You'll be able to tell the difference. Um, 
And yeah, we were recently on the track with Jerry Rig everything in this. And you know, it seems a little bit simpler than an automobile. <laughs> it seems like if yes. you had to move something, you can, a person could actually get it done. Totally, yeah. And, and yeah, this isn't, you know, by any means like the production layout, but mm -hmm. um, that being said, it's all... It's approachable. You know, it's approachable for sure. Like you can totally repair this thing and it's not daunting. There's still jack points and ways mm -hmm. to get under it, just like a normal, normal car. Um, a lot of people ask that, but it has jack points and everything, so. How much horsepower does each one of the wheels generate? Uh, we recently changed it, so I can tell you the exact number, but I gotta look it up. <laughs> it used to be roughly 50 mm -hmm. um, horsepower-ish. What size wheels do we have? 195, 50R16s? Yeah, so it's a 128 kilowatt hour drive system. Okay. Um, we'll have to just convert that to horsepower. <laughs> But it's it's low. It's uh, it's like 171 horsepower. Oh well, for a small car, 171 is a lot. Totally. I think the Prius is only like what 140 or something. Like that, <laughs> I think you're so. right. I think you're right. Yeah. So Beta has been cool because you can see like this is how um, originally we did these. These were hand layup okay. um, composite bodies, which you know very time intensive. But with CPC, what it allows us to do is stamp mm -hmm. you know these body panels in like 10 seconds. It's like phew, next one. Phew. So it's gonna you know, set us up for mass assembly of these mm -hmm. things right off, out the gate. So that's great. Um, Just incredible great looking at all the systems that you have to do to build a car. Yes. <laughs> it's like one thing after another. Now that we finished that, we got to work on this. I know everyone's working in tandem to get this thing to production. You know, the battery team, suspension team, low voltage team, integrations, uh, you know. What's the so, coolest team out of all of them? Who parties the most? Uh, marketing is <laughs> probably the coolest. Marketing is the coolest? Okay. <laughs> Um, we get to do all the fun events and you know show up uh -huh. terror to the world and that's really fun but we like to bring the engineers along with us because it's the community that makes up so unique um, so it's, it's easy to get focused in your you know task designing mm -hmm. one part for months and months but you know when you see the greater good like you're doing it for you know all these 40,000 plus people who, sure. who want this really exciting I think up has built an amazing community yeah we were stunned at how many comments we got <laughs> we're just like, this is great this is great and everyone's learning about the car and sharing what they know. It's really an amazing community. Your marketing team has done a fantastic job. Thanks. I feel like, yeah, we're, we're pretty cool. We're, yeah, we're you guys killing. really are doing a good job. <laughs> it's but, very uh, hard to build community and you guys successfully yeah. have done it. I know, yeah. It's, you know, the, the founders were like, man, if only we could get a few thousand orders, we could have a company. And like in the first, you know, first week there was like 5,000 orders, so. How many orders are you at now, do you know? Probably like 42,000. Wow, that's a lot of cars. Yeah, 42,000, and that represents like 1.5 billion in potential revenue. So wow. that's great for, you know, investors and everything. That's huge. How many Apteros could you produce here a day, do you think? Uh, we can produce 40 a day on um, like a normal one shift. Okay. So if we, you know, did two shifts, we could get it up to 80. We're gonna start with one shift. So mm -hmm. you're gonna see 40 a day coming out of this facility. And it's every 12 minutes, um, they cycle through the stations. So every station is a 12 minute station. Um, so that means every 12 minutes, an Aptera is gonna pop out of the building wow. fully done, so. How many employees will you hire to do this? <laughs> a lot. That's awesome for California. A lot. And it's a lot. <laughs> yes, uh, you know. That's exciting. We're gonna really scale up a lot when we're in production mm -hmm. mode. Um, a lot of, you know, production workers and assembly line stuff. Um, so yeah, we're working with you know, indigenous tribes too as well to, you know, educate them, bring some of them into this, you know, whole Aptera mission to sure. give back to the community too. Um, so it's going to be a cool year. It's going to be a very <laughs> cool year. Yeah. Well, hey, let's, uh, I'll take this and that out and then we okay. can film outside for a bit unless it's going to rain, but it looks good. <laughs> um, do you guys want to like sit and Sure, we'd Soul, love to go ahead and we're in no rush. We're totally flexible, whatever's best for you. Awesome. Just gonna open the door for you. My usual question is, does it come in black? But the white one is it's, it's pretty cool. Time. Yeah. <laughs> this it does beautiful. come in black as you saw at the front, but <laughs> this is very beautiful and slick. Yeah. I it know. feels really modern and like futuristic. It doesn't have like a me metallic feel that you get on another car. Right, yeah, this is uh, one of the wrapped uh, vehicles, so you can see how the wrap holds up. And this back window is beautiful. Yeah, I so if you, design. if you get without um, full solar, you can get, you know, a glass hash, where most people um, are getting full solar, right. so. That is kind of nice. a beautiful design, though. Oh, it is. It's kind of nice to get full solar, then you can, you know, totally 
uh, have this area blacked out for storage. And it's not like people can see in, you know. This is just beautiful. I love the two-tone. Yeah, so it's really nice. That. It's very nice. Who does the design work for things like that? Who? Uh, so yeah, Jason Hill leads the design team. Mm -hmm. um, Jamie is our kind of interior design guru, and he worked a lot on the final, you know, launch edition design. Well, they're um, both doing a fantastic job. Yeah, Jason, you know, primarily, you know, worked on the exterior and everything. Mm -hmm. Finalized that stuff, and then went into the interior, and the interior is now, you know, finalized as well. So this is beautiful. We can sit inside? Go ahead. Just watch your head because it's a little small compared to the production version. But Oh, this is so cool. It's kind of like sitting in a fighter cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to open the door. I'll be right back. This is so cool. How's it feel, Lee? It feels great. It feels like you're in a little fighter cockpit. The view is incredible. And you have all these like, instruments all over the place. And the back is enormous. Fit four dogs back there. <laughs> I think they're coming up the camping thing too, and you can definitely spend the night back there. The seats are super comfy and supportive. You've got good lumbar support for my old back. Very, very nice. The steering wheel is very cool too. It feels super modern. <laughs> here you come, we'll get in here. Yeah, so do you guys want to. Um, I can bring it outside, you can do like walk around stuff, then a test ride maybe? Sure, that'd be amazing. Like, oh, this is slick. Yeah, this is like the secret, um, you know, prototype <laughs> panel. <laughs> all prototypes, all car prototypes have that kind of stuff. Oh, that's fascinating. I don't know what it would feel like to be in the next wing as a kid, but it's got to be something like this. <laughs> totally, right? <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to do a three-point turn to get out. <laughs> They made it tough for me with all these holes everywhere. Yeah, I feel like this is an obstacle course. This used to be, <laughs> the floor used to be empty, so we had, you know, easier to get out. You know, not a bad problem to have if you have stuff in here. No, it's <laughs> definitely better than it being empty. You're totally right. This display is pretty slick. Yeah, it's nice. And in production, there's a, a little border around it, and the HVAC comes out of the vents on the side, which is super cool. Um, so we'll just swing over to the kind of filming area. <laughs>